Hey everyone, Nancy Hillis and Bruce Allhill here. And we had a fantastic week this past week with our live workshop from No to Flow. Had thousands of artists on there through the week. Met so many wonderful people. Had fabulous creative conversations. And so it was so exciting. So, so what happened is we, we met so many wonderful artists on the on the calls and on the on the live workshop and it brought up a lot of interesting conversations and i believe that these these creative conversations take you someplace new and that's something that bruce and i talk a lot about and so i was talking to bruce and bruce had some thoughts about how this ties into how creative conversations took us to this place of thinking about the adjacent possible, which we've been talking about in here for quite some time, and, and how that relates to your art and as an artist and as a creative. So why don't you tell us a little bit about that, Brace? Well, you know, we've been talking about the adjacent possible for quite a while, and it can be a pretty abstract concept and uh, can be hard to get a hold of. So we're actually going to do a real live science experiment <laughs> on this video and hopefully we won't burn the place down <clears throat> and uh, we, I want to show also how the adjacent possible relates to some of the other concepts we've talked about like phase transitions and poised instability and so I'll start with some some examples and uh, many of you probably sat by a river and watched water flowing and when it flows over a rock in the river you often see a kind of glassy part of the flow, and then there's a kind of roiling, turbulent part in there. Well, that's an example of a phase transition. That's going from what we call laminar flow, that's the smooth part over the rock, to turbulent flow, which is what happens on the other side. And that's, that's sort of structural. In other words, the structure of the river and the rock sets this up. But that's an example of a phase transition. Water changing to ice is a phase transition and their properties, they tend to be kind of sudden. Mm -hmm. Now, it's fascinating to look at that place right where the smooth flow is going into the turbulent flow. Because if you look at it, it's moving back and forth. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not doing exactly the same thing. It's sort of dancing around. It stays within, a, within you know, kind of a, an area, a playing field, but it, it moves around. It never repeats the same pattern twice. And... Um, we're going to, one of the examples I've used in the past is uh, smoke rising from a cigarette. Well, we know smoking is unhealthy, so we won't use that example. Um, <laughs> but it can be smoke from a, a snuffed out candle. So we actually brought one. Let's we, see what we got we here. We have a real live candle oh, here. Okay, I'll hold it. <laughs> okay, I'm going to light it. I'm going to run a little experiment here. Yeah, there we there go. We've got to let it burn for a bit to uh, build up some ember. Mm -hmm. we'll Give it a little bit more. There we go. Let's start there. there we there go. We go. It's starting to go. <laughs> so I'm going to blow the candle out, and then what you want to do is watch the smoke rise from it. Uh, maybe lower it down a little Bring and get a little down. closer. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Notice that the smoke rises smoothly and then turns into a turbulent whorl. I know that didn't last very long, but hopefully you could see it. And you can experiment with this at home too, <laughs> and, and and look at observe that, right? Right. So, so um, there's a kind of poised instability <clears throat> happens in this laminar flow, uh, turning into turbulent flow, and not the flow in a rock over a river, and uh, <clears throat> there's kind of the equivalent of that in <clears throat> the process of learning. That. If you're repeating what you know, that's kind of a laminar flow, just going over the multiplication tables, as it were. Um, there, it's predictable, like that part of the candle within a few inches of the wick. Um, if you know where it is the first two inches, you can predict pretty well where it's going to be the third inch and so on. But if you go further up, it's, your prediction fault goes out the window completely. So what this has to do with art and learning in general is that you want to be in a place <laughs> where there is learning, where you can predict what's going to happen to some extent, that's not completely chaotic, but you want to be close enough to where things are turbulent that you can put one kind of one foot into that experience, that you can explore novelty, but you can connect it 
to predictability. And that's where the adjacent comes from. That's the adjacent and adjacent possible. So um, it doesn't help you very much if you just do wild disconnected experimentation because you can't weave that together into a sense-making whole. You have to be able to relate it to something that you've, you've done already. Right, and so I'm thinking about working in a series as an artist, and I think this is a great way of getting at the adjacent possible. You have, you're, you're working, but, and you've done this painting, and so that's kind of, that foot knows about that painting, but now we want to put the other foot in the unknown and go to that edge to a place where we haven't gone before, it, but it's informed by where we've been. And so I think in art that would be more like series and kind of structure, um, I, you know, predictability, I know that's, that's, in, that's something we talk about in science, but that's actually not something we want in art. We don't want predictable art. So, but I think it maps on in terms of series and, and structure and then going to that edge, going to that edge, making a move and that move didn't exist before. That's right. Right. And so in going there. And I would say when you paint in a series or create in a series, like a theme in variations, you can tell that each painting is a member of a larger whole. Mm -hmm. That's the continuity. That's the laminarity. Um, but they're all different. And that's the, that's the unpredictable, unpredictability, yes. the experimental, the chaotic element. Mm -hmm. And so you want to live at this place of poised instability, the place where the, the smoke starts wiggling or the place where the river goes from smooth to falling back on itself. Yes. Um, and that's the, that's the poised instability. So you want to find a way of kind of helping yourself stay there, kind of mental exercises that help you stay there. That's really fascinating, and and you were joking with me this morning about an exercise for poise and stability. Yes, you know, I mean, probably you could stand up and get. Yeah, I could, I could yeah, demonstrate. You could stand, but you need to get far away from the camera so we get you in there. I won't. Uh, I won't do this with a real loaded brush, but okay. Um, you could uh, get the stool out of the way. Well, poised instability. One way of making yourself a little unstable is to stand on one foot, and. <laughs> <laughs> activate a canvas and, and see what happens <laughs> you know if you're if you're clumsy just lift your foot up an inch or two if you're really limber you can put it up behind your head <laughs> Bruce had that idea we were laughing this morning about that I mean and then and let's throw on a blindfold too right <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. it's interesting conversations it sure beats endlessly talking about the Giants and the Dodgers or <laughs> so anyway so yeah, so because we want to, I love that idea of like your that laminar flow, but then there's that edge there, that place where it is rippled or moving off or changing or different or novel, and that's where we want to go in our art. That's okay? right, and you don't want to be at either extreme of complete predictability and complete chaos. You know, right. it goes from one end is right. like a metronome, and the other end is like TV snow. If you remember, right. remember that we talked about visual that. static. And so really, yeah, we need, we need, yeah, we don't want just wild chaos, okay? There is an underlying structure, and we talk about that in my courses. There's an underlying structure to <clears throat> the seeming wild stream of consciousness mark making. There is structure, or we'll bring in some structure <laughs> and, and tether, the, tether that painting, and, and that's exciting. Um, but yeah, yeah, if you go extremely chaotic it is like that tv snow yeah and and our we like i mean really creating there's a decision desidere to means to cut through decisiveness and there's a decisiveness in laying a structure down or weaving a structure in right that's important in there and we are also connect that with constraint constraint is extremely important in creativity and not just throwing everything in to that painting. All right. So anyway, I think that's very interesting. Are there other things you want to talk about? Well, I mean, that... all of this is inspired by nature. And excuse me, there's there's evidence, and we believe that eco the ecosystem of life on Earth is poised at this place of instability. That it has continuity. In other words, species. If a new species shows up, it tends to stick around for a while but no species sticks around forever. They all 
they all fade eventually and are replaced by others. And so it's living right at this place. It's not just kind of new species showing up every week and lasting one lifetime and gone. There's more continuity than that. But it's not like frozen where we have all the same things that were here you know, billions mm -hmm. of years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, it's in between that. Yeah, that's really interesting. Um, somehow when you said frozen, I got that word frozen accident. In yeah, there, I mean, there, there's another term in biology called frozen accidents, which is that you have, um, you know, perhaps uh, some creatures cross an ice bridge, then the ice melts and they're stuck on this island. That's kind of a frozen accident. Then they evolve to be different. This is happened in Madagascar, which split away from the mm -hmm. mainland Africa tens of millions of years ago, and it has all its own species. And I would say that's a flavor of frozen accident. Yeah. And, you know, one other thing I think we, we talked about in this workshop that's very important for artists and creatives, I believe, is keeping the creative channels open. Keep it open. Keep it open so you can go to that edge, so you can go into that novel place, so that you can evolve that series. And, and, and don't crystallize too early. You want to avoid crystallizing too early. There's a tendency to rush to the finish, rush to create the masterpiece. And we want to keep it open because that's where exciting things happen. That's where the magic happens. So that's something to, to stay aware of. Yeah. And uh, one of the things we had a lot of fun talking about in the workshop is, is the latest book, The Adjacent Possible. Evolve your art from blank canvas to prolific artist. And Bruce and I worked on this together for two years, I think. Well, in fact, even how the name came up was kind of exploration. So Nancy gave a live workshop and I... I was just recruited to be muscle, you know, to move easels around and that sort of thing. But in between, I started thinking about adding other things and started giving little talks and also finding music to paint to. Um, and one of the talks I talked about, which at this point was not incorporated in any of the artistic material at all, was the adjacent possible. And the students were so stoked by this that they decided to call themselves the adjacents. And so we stumbled into that. <laughs> and, you know, as Winston Churchill said, most people, when they stumble over the truth, pick themselves up and carry on as if nothing had happened. Well, we didn't pick ourselves up and carry on. We, we started cogitating on this and it ultimately became a book. Yes. I mean, we've been writing about it since 2015. And you were talking about the adjacent policy back in Way the back, 90s, 90s in the Santa Fe Institute. We have had it on the blog since about 2015, but it's really come more into the foreground as we've been looking at patterns and cycles of creation of artists, the life, death, life cycle, and so many things, and just looking at patterns. And I believe this is where we want to go, into the adjacent possible, continually evolving our art. And again, in that training, and in the live training from last week, and also coming up, this Three Massive Mistakes training, you'll see more about that in there, and it's very exciting. I hope this is helpful to you. I, I, love, I love talking to Bruce and, and connecting the, the, this intersection of art, creativity, psychology, evolutionary biology, mathematics, science, and it's <laughs> fun. That's very convenient <laughs> because we live together. <laughs> exactly. So anyway, have a great day. Thanks for being here, and we'll see you soon. Okay. Bye-bye.